Welcome to the Stop COVID Deaths webinar series brought to you by the University of the Philippines. The Stop COVID Deaths shorts make it easier for you to go to the presentations that you are interested in. I'm Dr. Raymond Sarmiento, Director of the National Telehealth Center. And I'm Dr. Susie Pineda Mercado, Adjunct Faculty of the National Telehealth Center. Together, Together let's, let's stop, stop COVID deaths. COVID na, laptop pa. <laughs> May malaki ang problema natin. Actually, hindi lang yan ang problema natin. Ano? Uh, we have a lot of problems uh, in the country. No? Uh, As, as we saw over the past uh, several one and a half years, we've been battling against the spread of SARS-CoV-2. No? And uh, it's really quite difficult. And uh, there have been many deaths already. And uh, because we also have other hazards, it become a compound. No? And uh, this is not unique to the Philippines. It is a problem worldwide. No, especially those places na maraming natural hazards just like the Philippines. What am I talking about? No? Um, bukod do sa leptospirosis, which I think is the topic of uh, uh, for today in this webinar, there will be a lot of speakers and doctors talking about this. We also pro have problems about dengue. No? Uh, and another uh, and other Uh, infectious diseases. I've attended uh, other webinars, mga infectious disease experts who've been talking about uh, other infectious diseases that, that pose a problem. No, uh, It's a continuous threat that we need to look at. No? We cannot ignore all of these things. Now, after having said that, I'd like to emphasize that there are other natural hazards that we also have to consider in planning. No? Uh, kailangan, uh, planning should be anticipatory. We should not ignore these things. Like, for example, before the COVID outbreak in the Philippines, we had this uh, very big eruption. No? Uh, it, it was an eruption that generated base surges. No? We just published this in uh, scientific reports in, of nature.com, no, of nature. And uh, these base surges actually is the most feared hazard, I think, of Taal Volcano. It did happen. Uh, you're seeing there a picture of base surges formed in uh, the 1965 and subsequent years na may eruption from Taal, uh, generating base surges. No? In fact, the term base surge... Uh, was coined uh, by a geologist, a USGS geologist, after studying the, this phenomenon occurring at Taal. No? And eventually, it got, uh, uh, got uh, mainstreamed into the volcanological literature. And many uh, uh, volcanic uh, volcanology agencies still use that term. You're seeing there in that very beautiful picture, an elevation model of base surges that form dunes. Para siyang desert, no? And it's really very, it's, it's, it's occupying, it was deposited in a big swath of land southeast of Taal Volcano Island. And you're seeing here the, the photo of a school, depth ed school, that got overwhelmed by the base surges. They tra travel at very high speeds, They're more than 100 degrees centigrade. And uh, definitely, if uh, students were there, uh, baka namatay sila. It's a good thing that uh, there was our sleep time to evacuate the people. Um, so this is one type of hazard associated with volcanism. We also have uh, other hazards, like for example, more recently, we experienced bug. No? Uh, it's called volcanic smog. And it's because of aerosols and sulfur dioxide that uh, gets uh, to pollute the air. No? And uh, that needs to be considered because there are some medical issues when we inhale polluted air uh, like that, no? na tinatawag and na VOG. And the VOG was actually related to the uh, increase in SO2 emissions from Taal Volcano in the run-up to 
to the small erupt eruptions that happened, I think, early part of July. Apart from volcanism, we also have problems about earthquake activity. No? When faults move, there are many faults or earthquake faults in the Philippines. When they move, uh, they generate earthquakes. There are many earthquakes. In fact, as I speak, probably one earthquake is happening somewhere in the world. No? But uh, less frequent, yung mga malalaking earthquakes. But when they happen, we call it the, as the big one. And when it happens in a highly populated area, there may be uh, many deaths. And uh, if that happens in Metro Manila, we have many faults that uh, can move. They are active faults. And when they move, it, it uh, affects Metro Manila. That will compound our response to COVID-19. You can just imagine that uh, all of these people will be staying outside. No? Uh, they cannot stay in their house for fear that uh, there will be continuous ground shaking and make the, 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 the infrastructure or the, their houses collapse. So they will stay outside. Just, what happen, just like what happened in Mindanao, for several months, yung mga tao were staying on the streets. No? Uh, I don't know. No? So pagka nangyari sa Manila yan, Mindanao yon, uh, less populated. In Metro Manila, we are highly populated here. No? Uh, several, ten, more than 10 million, probably 20 million uh, people. So pag nangyari yon, uh, people will be staying outside. And we might have a problem with controlling the spread of COVID-19. Apart from that, meron pa tayong mga ibang examples. No? Uh, Yung earthquake, the most recent example na nangyari was the Batangas magnitude 6.6 .6 earthquake. Uh, also recently in December, uh, maybe November or December, basta nung Ulysses when that happened, uh, it affected uh, several provinces no? um, in Luzon and it hit even Metro Manila and the impacts were, were heavy doon sa Cagayan Valley, no? uh, partly related to the dam release and uh, mostly related to the uh, heavy rains that triggered massive floods along Cagayan River. And uh, these are the things that we need to prepare for. And we also know that uh, because of that flooding event, nagkaroon ng, um, nagkaroon ng increase in in COVID-19 infections in, in that area sa Cagayan. Apart from the natural hazards, we also have problems about uh, yung mga man-made. No? For example, this one in 2017, we had, uh, uh, sorry, in 2018, we had a rapid decrease of uh, the La Mesa water level. Uh, you can see that orange line in the graph. Uh, as compared to the 2017 graph, uh, we did not have any problems. But uh, uh, later on in 2019 and 2020, that did not have, uh, we did not have problems anymore because uh, the problem was fixed. Uh? So mukhang man-made yun because uh, uh, the rains, when we looked at them, as well as the uh, feeding dam, no? which is Angat, wala namang problema. Nagkaroon lang ng problema sa Lamesa Dam. But uh, a discussion of this is very important. We need to uh, look at not only just at the natural hazards, but also things like this. No? Because if we have uh, lack of supply of water in Metro Manila, for example, because there's no water sa Lamesa Dam, wala namang problema dun sa ulat, um, magkakaroon tayo ng malaking problema kasi uh, more, I think 90% of the water supply of Metro Manila comes from this place. So baka magkakaroon tayo ng problema. So it's not just the earthquake that uh, can uh, trip or, or break all of the water lines, pati rin yung, yung source no? na, na dahil hindi maganda siguro yung management or whatever it is, uh, we need to look at that and secure our water supply. Kasi pag uh, wala tayong water supply, especially during the time of pandemic, eh, magkakaroon tayo ng napakalaking, napakalaking problema. 
Um, so we keep on monitoring this at we as well sa UP NOAA Center and the UP Resilience Institute. As was uh, discussed by Doc Susi uh, earlier, sabi niya, natural hazards do not stop because of COVID-19. And that is true. Kasi the Philippines is in the Pacific uh, Ring of Fire and we're also in the Typhoon Belt. Uh, you can see here all of the typhoon tracks. We have about 20 that uh, enter into the Philippine area of responsibility. Uh, there are more landfalls, probably less than 10, that uh, that hit uh, the Luzon and Visayas regions. And there are less that happen, that make landfall doon sa Mindanao. And we're also in the Pacific Ring of Fire. Uh, we share the same problems as the countries of Indonesia, Japan, uh, places like Alaska, uh, Western United States, Western Canada, Western part of South America. Uh, it's called the Pacific Ring of Fire because all of these places which have uh, a lot of volcanism and a lot of earthquakes surround the Pacific Ocean. So it looks like a ring, so it's called as the Pacific Ring of Fire. Now, when we talk about all of these problems about uh, uh, earthquakes and eruptive activity of volcanoes uh, and typhoons no, or severe weather. They're actually the phenomena. No? We really need to prepare against the hazards brought about by these phenomena. Like for example, when there's volcanism, what we need to prepare for are the hazards. No? I said the hazards are the ones that kill. Uh, like for example, for volcanism, the hazards are Pyroclastic flows, uh, pyroclastic fall, debris avalanches, uh, ballistics, lava, noxious gases, and tsunamis. No? Uh, each and every hazard have corresponding maps. And everybody must know those hazards if it is present in their neighborhood. So kailangan tinitignan natin lahat yung mga hazard maps na yun. Uh, see if uh, they are present in your subdivision, sa inyong neighborhood, or in your schools, or uh, maybe your your office place, no? So saan kayo nagtatrabaho? Uh, Before you go there, you have to check whether there are hazards in those places. For earthquakes, naman, uh, there are hazards, no? So the earthquake per se does not kill; it's the hazards that kill, and we need to. Uh, look at the hazard maps. Again, uh, know your neighborhood. These hazards for earthquakes are called ground rupture, ground shaking, subsidence, liquefaction, tsunami, sage, landslides, fire. I don't have enough time to discuss each and every one of these hazards because limited yung time. But I just want you to take note that it's the hazards. Uh, it's the hazards that we need to prepare for. For severe weather like typhoons, uh, we also need to look at uh, the hazards, no? uh, just like for volcanism and strong winds, floods, landslides, and storm surges. So I guess everybody is familiar uh, with all of these hazards that we need to prepare for. I just don't know if everybody is aware uh, whether these hazards are present everyone's neighborhood. So, gano'n ka na kayo yung support? Hello? May ano? It's the music part of your presentation, Dr. Mahar. Ah, no problem. Masaya ako na ako dito. Ako na. Ako. Ako naman, ano, I naturally assume it's part of the presentation. It's part of the presentation. Mas malakas yung yung music kaysa sa boses nyo, Dr. Mahar. Sige, ayan, pinatay ko na. So, ulit, guess, ulit, Mahar, ulit. Kasi hindi ka narinig eh. Yung music na right. nang-wait namin. So, for, for severe weather like typhoons, no, it's, the, it's the hazards that we need to prepare for. Strong winds, floods, landslides, storm surges. I guess everybody is aware of these hazards. No? We've seen them. Uh, the strong winds, the floods, the landslides, probably 
storm surges you've seen sa TV, what happened sa Tacloban and in the Central Philippines region. Uh, I'm just not sure if everybody is aware of the extent of the hazards or whether they are present in in their homes, no? in their neighborhood or in their office area or in in the schools where their children, where your children go to. No? Lahat kasi ito, they have corresponding maps. No? And when you know that there are hazards, like this one, this is UP. This is quite, the place is quite well planned. You see that lagoon, walang mga settlements. No? So even if it floods there, that's fine. But it's not the same for other places. So what we need to do is to know all of these areas that are hazardous, uh, especially if it concerns uh, the place where you live in, no? um, uh, your family. Uh, and know where to go whenever there's a warning. So again, uh, the, the point here is that we do not prepare for the phenomena. We prepare for each and every hazard brought by all of these events like earthquakes, uh, volcanism, and severe weather like typhoons and tropical storms. Now, uh, here is just a, a short uh, compilation of the lessons that we've learned from past disasters because we've been looking at the disasters that have happened in the Philippines. No? We, we are a, a natural laboratory for, for disaster research here in the country. No? Uh, and uh, we can learn a lot, of, uh, a lot from the, the actual disasters uh, to learn the mistakes in order for us not to repeat them. So I list here some of the short-term things that we need to do. Uh, Hazard-specific area-focused and time-bound warnings, that's very important. Extensive use of sensors, use of maps that show where the safest places are in the community. We need to share, no? Bawal ang swapang sa disaster work. We need to share because the Sendai framework stipulates or the, the guiding principle is that we have to have a whole of society and science-based approach, no? So kailangan, we need to share the data sets, especially if they are publicly funded data sets. Long term, uh, we need to do anticipatory planning, put it into the comprehensive land use plans. We need to put the hazard maps or depict scenarios of hazards that are bigger than what we have experienced. That is uh, called as probabilistic risk assessment. And that has to be mainstreamed into comprehensive land use plans. Education, open data, that's very important, and uh, more scientific research. So far, uh, nagkaroon tayo during the COVID ng mga ilang mga typhoons. And I guess when Samar was hit by uh, typhoon uh, Ambo, no? typhoon Ambo, uh, very minimal yung, uh, anong tawag nito? Yung, yung, yung damage, yung, loss, yung, yung fatalities. No? Five dead and scattered pa yon. And they manage well. And I think the reason why they were able to manage the, the typhoon, uh, despite its impacts, was because they were quite well planned. Remember that uh, they that that place was hit by by Yolanda, and uh, because of that, uh, there was a lot of help. Uh, those uh, municipalities and cities in in the Central Philippines region, especially Samar, were well prepared in terms of planning. Uh, they planned well and uh, they were able to manage the, 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 the COVID-19 situation quite well as well. No? So, uh, meron din tayo, sa Ulysses, there was a rise in COVID-19 cases in Tugugarao. It was roughly the same uh, type of disaster management as what happened doon sa Samar. But I guess uh, that's a lesson for us. No? How, how do we really do it? No? Um, and Ito lang naman yung mga gusto natin sanang maintindihan no? ng, ng maraming tao na we, we cannot ignore all of these hazards because they are all connected with each other. For example, itong COVID-19. That is just one example. We had COVID-19 and nagkaroon tayo ng problema sa agriculture, sa different sectors of society, no? sa, uh, sa health, sa forestry, sa energy, sa education, sa tourism, and we all know that. No? So, planning uh, the, the municipalities and cities need to be done 
uh, across all sectors. Kasi hindi lang pwedeng sa health lang tayo, no? kung by COVID, sa, uh, sa public health issue, hindi lang pwedeng doon tayo nagpa-plan. No? We must plan against all of the hazards that I've just discussed. We have to have maps and plan it according to the vision of the city or municipality, of, of, of the community. And uh, just to give you an example, this is a land use plan. Uh, this is the storm surge map. That's the, uh, sorry, the, the flood map, the storm surge map, the landslide map. This is the uh, zonal plans of the community. Now, if we can put them all together uh, with the plans of the community, for example, this settlement area uh, that I'm showing, one is full of yellow and orange hazards. That is not a good settlement site. No? One is without any hazards, without any color, uh, actually gray lang. No? That means there are no hazards. That is a good plan to, to make development uh, for, for settlements. For the agriculture sector, you can see their, their plants no? uh, ay binabaha, but not all places are flooded. No? Uh, so maybe for climate change, they can plant resilient crops and for those areas that are not flooded, then they, they can uh, plant the normal crops. And this one, uh, which is a tourist area, um, we can, you can see that, uh, oy, maganda yung area sana, kaya lang hazardous. No? Kasi that's a good place where they can look at yung kalaw, no? na bird. Na be, it's very beautiful. And uh, uh, that's a source of revenue from tourism. So what they can do is that... Uh, uh, during times na wala namang bagyo, it doesn't, these storms don't happen every day. Heavy rains don't happen every day. So, uh, dyan sila, uh, continuous yung tourism, maraming pupunta. And then, pag may bagyo, well, there's a warning from Pag-asa, they can pack up, go to the gray places, no? yung gray-colored places, which are nearby. And then, when the storm is in the South China Sea, they can quickly go back and resume operations. Uh, that is called business continuity. You're planning for business continuity in the sector of tourism. Now, for our problems like uh, uh, COVID uh, compounded by leptospirosis and dengue, uh, we must uh, really look at the hazards. No? Pag bumabagyo, uh, dyan nagbabaha, dyan din yung pinagpupugaran ng mga... Uh, ng mga uh, uh, ang tawag dito, yung mga taga na tapos pagka lumubog ka, eh, baka yung ihi ng daga ay nandun sa tubig, etc., etc. That will be discussed later on. So we need to know these places. We need to use science and technology to find out those places no? and uh, make visualizations like this that uh, clearly show to us where they are no? so that it can be communicated to the people. Kasi mahirap i-communicate ito and we need good visual tools no? uh, like sa internet, ano ba yung mga places na yan, where to avoid them, yung, yung possible uh, leptospirosis. And uh, really, uh, the, the, the most advanced technologies that we can make use of and the frontier science that we can also uh, make use of, no? uh, we have to apply for our disaster risk reduction and mitigation efforts. So UPNOA Center and the UPRI will be coming up with uh, a, a new website, a revamped uh, website that will show all of these hazards no? uh, for hazard-specific area-focused and time-bound warnings. And hopefully with this uh, 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 holistic approach in, in tackling uh, the, the, the natural hazards, the biological hazards, uh, we can make a better plan so that we can reduce the impacts of all of these problems that we face. We hope that you learned as much as we did from that excellent presentation. We also hope that you will join us every Friday from 12 noon to 2 p.m. Manila time on Zoom, Facebook, or YouTube. So stay safe, stay connected, and, and see, see you online. online.